Welcome back to another episode of Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. Today, I want to get into an artist that I've looked at previously. In a previous episode, I looked at uh, Pablo Picasso. But this time, I really want to focus on one specific artwork. His great masterpiece, Guernica. Picasso was an internationally known artist by 1910. This allowed him the ability to shake things up a bit with his personal style. Picasso was always experimenting. As Cubism was evolving, he was also experimenting with Dada and Surrealism, as well as other variations of ways of creating sculpture and two-dimensional art. He was working in Surrealism from about 1925 until 1937. He wasn't a surrealist like Salvador Dali, but he was more inclined to approach surrealism like a Juan Moreau. Picasso's most known surrealist work was one called Guernica. Guernica was Picasso's finest war protest work. But what is the story behind this great artwork? In July of 1936, civil war broke out in Spain. General Francisco Franco's nationalists were opposed by the Common People's Republican Party. As Spain's conflict against the right escalated, the nationalists sought support from Mussolini's fascist Italy and Hitler's Nazi Germany. The Republicans tried to get aid from Stalin and Communist Soviet Union. Picasso would join the Communist Party in October of 1944. Franco wanted to save Spain from atheism and socialism, and was willing to kill half of the citizens in order to accomplish his goal. It's like all of the major players of World War II gathering for a pre-game show, but this was no game. But taking our focus back to Guernica, this little town became a bit of a safe haven for the Republican supporters that were displaced by the conflict the city made a stand against Franco's dictatorship. On this particular day, Monday, April 26, 1937, people from all around traveled to the little city to buy and sell their wares. It was right around four o'clock in the afternoon, and this little unprotected city became the first in world history to be rocked with saturation bombings. Franco had approved for Hitler, under the command of Goering, to deploy his Luftwaffe and pound the town with 40 warplanes that waved in with high explosives and incendiary bombs, which destroyed the town in a shelling that lasted four hours. Scared for their lives, people were running into the fields but were gunned down by machine gun fire. One quarter of the city's population was murdered on the spot, and many more would die of their injuries after the fact. The news of this spread quickly, and Picasso read about this in a Paris newspaper on April the 30th. The politically outspoken Picasso refused to enter Spain under the dictatorship and swore he would never return to his homeland as long as Franco was in control of Spain. What do you think an artist is? An idiot with nothing but eyes? No. Painting wasn't invented to decorate people's houses. It's a weapon of attack and defense against the enemy. The Republic would commission Pablo Picasso to create the painting Guernica for the Spanish Pavilion as a part of the 1937 World's Fair that was to be hosted in Paris, France that year. From the start of the painting until hanging it in the pavilion, Picasso worked only 24 days. Picasso's idea for this painting would evolve as he would continue with the work. There were some elements that stayed true to their original design. The childlike horse became twisted with injury. The horse is based on the idea of Pegasus, the mythological symbol of the birth of art and poetry, who was born from the dead Medusa. Pegasus would inspire positive things, such as art can be inspired by disaster. The fallen warrior holds a broken sword, and behind his hand we see the new hope of a growing flower. The bull would become a symbol of Spain, the mother holding her dead baby and the evacuating person peering out the window. There would also be conflict during the painting. In Picasso's personal life, there was always some level of drama. A fight between Dora Maar and Marie Therese Walter in front of the painting inspired Picasso to intensify the agony on the faces of some of the women. He would also look to Peter Paul Rubens and Francisco de Goya for inspiration. Beginning the process, he wanted to work very large. He wanted people to see this very clearly. The painting was actually too tall. He had to paint the work 
at a slight angle so the 12 foot tall canvas would fit into the studio. He would use ladders and brushes on poles to reach the high place areas. Although Picasso did not own the work, he did not want it to go out of sight of Franco. And not really having a place for the painting to go, the painting would go on to a tour. The painting was taken all over Europe and was finally staying somewhat long term at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. And Picasso wanted the painting to stay there until Spain was free. Franco asked the United States government to seize the painting and return it for some unpaid taxes, but the United States refused. Many French police officers and members of the Gestapo gave Picasso a hard time for his political beliefs and his painting. So he made postcards with the work's image on it and handed them out all over the place. On one occasion, a German officer received one of these postcards and asked Picasso, did you do this? And with Picasso's typical quick wit, he replied, no, you did. After many years in New York, the painting would be moved to Spain in 1981 to be kept at the Prada Museum in Madrid. In 1992, it became a major work that was sent to the Renia Sofia Museum in Madrid. Back in 2010, I got the chance to go to Spain to see this very, very powerful piece of artwork at the Renia Sofia. And let me tell you, there is nothing like actually going to a place like this to see this type of artwork. You can look at it in a book or a postcard or a magazine or on a slideshow or even on a really great, well-presented video like this one. But there is nothing, nothing that compares to actually going in some form of transportation from where you're at to Spain into the Renio Sofia and looking at this very powerful piece of artwork. The details and the textures and the patterns and the things that Picasso does in the artwork come nowhere close to describing what's going on in the painting unless you're actually there with your own eyes and viewing it. And I would say that about any artwork. Looking at it on a screen or looking at it in a book has nothing, nothing in the realm of, of comparability to the physically going to these museums and seeing the artwork firsthand. And this is a very, very powerful piece of artwork. To illustrate that point, back in 2003, the then Secretary of State, General Colin Powell, was meeting with the United Nations Secretary Council about the war in Iraq. A print of Guernica was behind them on the council room wall. Because of the symbology of this very powerful painting, a large blue tarp with the UN logo was put up as a backdrop to conceal Guernica because even as the most powerful military force in the world would have to respect the power of this piece of artwork because of the image that it would present. Thank you for watching this episode of Art 101 on Picasso's Guernica. I really appreciate you clicking on the video and watching getting to this point and Hopefully, I can have other content and videos and things like that for you that are coming up in the near future. So, thanks.